Matthew chapter number 6, we'll begin reading verse 25. The Bible says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on it. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all, after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Father, thank you for allowing our folks to go to the jail this morning and minister and preach over there. Thank you for the good choir singing, good congregational singing, good special singing. Thank you for a good week of revival meeting. And God, thank you for being so good to us. Now for the next few minutes, I pray you'd center our hearts and our thoughts upon the Word of God. And I do pray that, God, you would speak to us. I pray that, Lord... Uh, you would meet every need of every heart. Father, you know the number of the hairs on every head. You know our down-sitting and our uprising. Uh, you know our yesterdays. You know our todays. You know our tomorrows. Uh, and you certainly know what we stand in need of. And God, you do all things well. Uh, Father, for that one that is struggling, I pray you'd strengthen them. Uh, Father, for that one uh, that is cold and indifferent on God, I pray you'd warm their heart to the things of the Lord. Uh, Father, for that one uh, uh, that's inconsistent, I pray they'd get consistent. Uh, and Father, uh, uh, for that one that may not know you, I pray that today uh, they would come to the place of their life where they realize they need the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, uh, and they'll believe on him and be saved. Uh, Father, for whatever other need is needed today, I pray that it be met in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are sick. I pray for Miss Crystal. Uh, I pray you'd touch her. Uh, I pray that, Lord, uh, uh, the great physician would reach down from heaven uh, and touch that darling saint's body. Uh, Father, help her and sustain her. I pray for her family as well, that, God, you'd be with them. Uh, Father, not only them, uh, I do pr uh, pray this morning uh, for Sister Sonny that you touch her and strengthen her and help her to recover. Uh, I pray for Brother Mike in the hospital, Lord, you touch him. Uh, I pray for Madison and what she'll be going through tomorrow. Uh, God, you'd be with that young lady. Uh, Father, I pray for Miss Kay's niece, uh, Lord, uh, and how cancer is robbing her body. Uh, I pray for her, uh, and I pray Miss Kay would be a blessing to her. Uh, Father, I pray for Aunt Sue uh, and her family family. Uh, my cousins, Lord, you'd be with them uh, in their loss and in their mourning. Uh, and then, Father, I pray for those that are providentially hindered, you'd be with them. Uh, but, Lord, for the next few minutes, uh, use this unworthy vessel, uh, put a hedge about us, uh, bind the powers of hell, uh, and glorify your name. Uh, and, Father, we'll not fail to bless and praise you for all that you do. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ we ask it all. Uh, Amen. Uh, amen. I want you to notice, uh, first of all, concerning this text, uh, the messenger. Who is the one who is delivering the sermon? We find that the messenger uh, is the Lord Jesus himself. Uh, 
in chapter 7, in verse number 28, the Bible says, And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. He taught them as one having authority because he was the living word. He was the darling son of God. He is the darling son of God. His message is still true and powerful today, and it is exactly what we need for this hour. We see the messenger. Now notice the message. Can I say that, my dear friends, this message starts in chapter 5 and it ends in chapter number 7. It is commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount, and it is widely known as the greatest sermon ever taught and ever heard by man. In this sermon, Jesus is trying to get the Jews who were steeped in religion to get their minds off of religion, get their minds off what the scribes and the high priest had been teaching them, and get their minds on the, on the Lord and what the Lord had for them. And can I say today, if we could get our minds off of everything that has been funneled into them, both religious and non-religious, and get our minds on the Lord and get our hearts centered upon Him, what a different life if we would have in this world. Uh, can I say that Jesus is teaching in these verses that we read, uh, don't fear. It amazes me how many people live in fear. Mm, can I say that mm, politicians and mm, CEOs and school teachers uh, and uh, other people will prey on the fact that you're living in fear. They will promote themselves and dominate those that live in fear. Can I say there's only one thing that we need to fear, and that's the Lord. By having a fear of God, that is a reverential trust with a hatred of evil. We need to fear the Lord, but Jesus is telling them not to fear. People are so afraid of so many things. They're so, they're so afraid of things that may never even come to pass. They're just afraid. He says, don't fear. But he also is teaching, don't fret. Amazes me how many people worry about things. Huh? Well, what if this happens, and what if that happens, and I'm worried about this, and I'm worried about that, and I'm worried about that. You do know worry is a sin. The Bible says anything that's not of faith is sin. So he's teaching don't fear, don't fret, but he is teaching them just follow, and just follow him. And if we could learn to just follow the Lord, our lives would be so much better. We see the messenger. We see the message. Now notice the motivation that Jesus is trying to give them. Look at verse 30. He says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow, it is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Look at verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. He is trying to motivate them. He is trying to develop a mindset in them. Uh, he is conveying them this thought. Trust the Lord. And by so doing, you'll become trustworthy. Trust the Lord. And by so doing, you'll become trustworthy. And with God's help this morning, I want to preach on that thought. I want to preach on trustworthy Christians trustworthy Christians. Now let me just clarify, not everybody that calls themselves a Christian is a Christian. They were first called Christians in Antioch uh, when their lives emulated the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, when folks looked at them, uh, when folks heard them preach, uh, when folks watched their walk, uh, when folks watched uh, uh, their lifestyle, they say they're acting like Christ uh, and they called them Christians. Uh, 
Can I say you, uh, you're not a Christian because you go to church. Uh, you're not a Christian uh, uh, because uh, you've had an experience or you're religious. Uh, you're a Christian when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, and then you start following him uh, and you be start becoming like him. Uh, and the world sees him in you. Uh, and certainly you cannot be a trustworthy Christian unless you're a Christian. So there are Christians, colonel, they're saved on their way to heaven, but they're not trustworthy. There's a fellow sitting right over there in the blue shirt. His name's Ray Roberts. I don't have any problem. Matter of fact, I'll do it. This is not just an illustration. This, this just came on my mind. Here, Brother Ray. How long have I known you? Almost 30 years. Hold on to that for me. He's trustworthy. When I get that back, it'll have everything in it that's got in it when I gave it to him. There's some of you I wouldn't do that to. <laughs> but I will him. He's even got the code to my house. There have been times I come home, he's at my house. Huh? Check and make sure the singles are all the way they're supposed to be. Checking on things, working on things, clean out my dryer vent. He's, he's just showed up. And my wife will feed him. So he keeps showing up. <laughs> kind of like that neighborhood cat that you feed one time. But I want to preach on trustworthy Christians. Can I say trustworthiness is proven First of all, by one's pursuits. Look again, if you will, in verse number 33. The Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Can I say that trustworthiness is proven by your pursuits? Can I say that as humans, as individuals, as persons... Uh, there are a lot of things in this world that we can seek after. There are some people that seek after fortune and fame. They fall way short, but they seek after it. There are some people that seek certain careers. There are some people that uh, uh, seek to uh, uh, play different sports. There are some people uh, 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 who seek uh, knowledge, and they're all about the information age. Uh, there are some people that seek for people to like them on their certain social media page. Uh, there are people that are always pursuing something. But if you're a trustworthy Christian, you are always seeking him your pursuit is him not what he will do for you but him who did you come out to see today Jesus asked that same question to a crowd that came out to hear John the Baptist preach he said did you come out to see a prophet he said oh a prophet indeed what I'm saying, there wasn't a man born a woman greater than John the Baptist. But who'd you come out to see today? Why are you here today? Amen. Can I say that a trustworthy Christian is proven by his pursuits? He's seeking the Lord. He came to hear from heaven. He came to find out something for his own life uh, that will better him. Uh, that will cause him to be more effective uh, in pointing others to Jesus. Let me ask you something. When was the last time you pointed somebody to Jesus? Hmm. Can I say that it's not easy, Miss Melissa, pointing somebody to Jesus when I'm living like the devil? Miss Noreen, can I say it's not easy pointing somebody to Jesus when all I want to talk about is football. And all my pursuits have been football. You see, you can tell what's in somebody's heart if you listen to them long enough. Because it's going to come out their mouth. Huh? But if we've been pursuing Jesus, we have no problem talking about him and pointing others to him. And boy, what a week we had. 
and every theme of every message uh, uh, succumbed to the, to the point that mm, why we're here, we're to point people to Jesus. A trustworthy Christian is known by his pursuits. Can I say a trustworthy Christian is also known by his priorities. Look again at verse 33. But seek ye last. Seek ye when it's convenient. Seek ye when it fits into your schedule. Seek ye uh, when you have nothing else to do. That's not what it says. The Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. A trustworthy Christian is one that you can tell and trust because of their priorities. Amen. Their priority is the Lord, family, work, and then whatever. Boy, real quiet right there. Huh? Our priorities need to be Him. Our priorities need to be what He wants for our lives. Say, so how do I know? He gave us a manual. Huh? And the manual says to seek Him first. Can I say the manual says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves uh, to the house of God. He said, uh, so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day? His imminent return. Uh, friend, if you look around this world, uh, I I'm telling you, uh, it can't be much longer before he comes after his church. Uh, 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 it's not a time to play around. Uh, it's not a time to pursue things outside the house of God. Uh, our priority ought to be what Jesus' priority is. Uh, and he loved the church and gave himself for it. Can I say there are a lot of people saved, but you can't trust them because their priorities are messed up. Amen. Hmm? How many of you believe that I am the pastor for Emmanuel Baptist Church? Amen. I didn't say how many of you believe that I hold the office. How many of you believe that I'm the man that God ordained for this church? How many of you believe that I try to seek the mind of God? Amen. How many of you believe that when I seek the mind of God, I seek if we're going to, uh, when we're to have a meeting and who's to come and preach it? Amen. Yeah, I notice the amens are getting lower. Hmm. Can I say that God knows what this local assembly needs and God knows when we need it and can I say that in the fact that God knows he also knows uh, what may befall you uh, around uh, what he knows that the church needs nothing ever catches God by surprise so if you're a member of this local church and God deems that we're to have revival meeting and the preacher starts announcing revival meeting for months, don't you think that God knows we're having revival meeting? So don't you think that God knows whatever's going to happen around your life during that time? It might be God's just trying to prove who's trustworthy. Amen. Where were people's priorities? Got real quiet right there. Huh? Can I say? People always show out 
what is most important to them when the choice has to be made. I'm just preaching on trustworthy Christians. Did not the Bible say, but seek ye first the kingdom of God? Amen. So, but, Brother Doug, can I say this? Sheep follow goats, but. I love my friend Greg Phillips' definition of excuses. Lies wrapped around words. I'm just talking about trustworthy Christians this morning. They're proven by their pursuits, what they're seeking after. They're proven by their priorities. They're also proven by their purity. Look what the Bible says. But, for, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Not our righteousness. All of our righteousness is as filthy rags. I'm glad I'm robed in His righteousness. I'm glad I'm justified by faith. I'm glad I'm washed in His blood. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm sealed. I'm glad for the goodness of God. But He says that we're to seek after His righteousness. You know why? Because we live in this world... And filthiness gets attached to us. Huh? And so we need to seek the Lord uh, and pull a little 1 John 1 9 every now and then. Uh, if we'll confess our sins, uh, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins uh, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, and he imputes unto us his righteousness. What a blessing. Uh, I'm glad. Hallelujah. When he looks at me, he don't see me. Uh, he sees himself uh, because his righteousness is imputed unto me. Isn't it a blessing that the Bible tells us to boldly come to the throne of grace that we may obtain help in time of need? Isn't it wonderful there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus? Isn't it a blessing Jesus said that we'd, if we'd ask anything in his name, his Father would do it? Amen. Can I say that I don't go to the hardware store seeking righteousness? Can I say that I don't go to a man seeking righteousness? If you came to me and say, Preacher, I need the righteousness of God, uh, will you impute it unto me? I can't. Amen. But I know one who can. Yes, right. And his name is Jesus. Right. And can I say that mm, trustworthiness is proven by one's purity? Now, righteousness means uh, moral integrity. It means uprightness. It means... Uh, your standing is where it should be. Amen. Thank God for people who have stood for this book for generations. I'm glad for the men God put in my life uh, that stood for this book, that stood for righteousness, uh, that preached to me, uh, that let me know what I was, but let me know what Jesus could do for me uh, and what Jesus could do through me. Uh, I'm thankful uh, for men of character, men uh, of moral integrity, uh, men that just stood for the old book, uh, the blood and the blessed hope, uh, and made a, a difference in my life. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, hey, there are men in my life, they weren't perfect, uh, uh, but they were trustworthy. Uh, they were good examples uh, of what God can do in a life if you trust in Him. Hallelujah. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. You don't have to live, live like this world. Don't have to look like this world. Don't have to smell like this world, huh? If you got Jesus, you're a new creature. Uh, former things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Huh? If you don't have a change in your life, you don't have Christ in your life. Uh, can I say this? Some of you are about to faint. i got to hurry. Trustworthiness is proven by one's pursuits, by one's priority, by one's purity, but also, listen to me, trustworthiness are proven by one's provisions. Now, don't, don't get me in this name it, claim it crowd. I'm not with that. But look what the Bible says. Look at verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness 
and all these things shall be added unto you. If you do your part, God's going to do his part. He said that the Father knows what we have need of. Knows what we have need of to put in our belly, put on our bodies. He knows what we have need of for a roof over our head, shoes on our feet. Uh, he knows that you need gas in your car. He knows you need tires on your car. He knows everything you have need of. Uh, he knows better than you what you have need of. Uh, he knows what you have need of physically, but he's dealing with what we need spiritually. Uh, and he said if we'll seek him first uh, and the kingdom of God uh, and his righteousness, uh, then he'll provide... Uh, all that we need uh, and can I say uh, uh, one of the uh, the, the uh, signs and beauties of uh, somebody is trustworthy uh, uh, they're not out begging for anything uh, uh, they have need of anything uh, because God has provided everything they need uh, listen a trustworthy Christian does not pursue things yet all of his needed things are provided. Hmm? Uh, I love it when people brag on the Lord. I don't like it when people act like God's a pauper. There are some guys I don't want to be around because every time you're around them, all they do is beg for money. Let me have you something. God's got it, He owns the whole world. Huh? If you'd quit seeking his hand and start seeking him, you'd have it too. Right. All you need. I wish Miss Crystal was here. I love that song she sings. About not seeking his hand, but seeking his face. Huh? Yeah. That's what this verse is teaching. So many people are seeking the things and they're missing him. Right. But if you seek him... You get him, and he provides the things. Huh? So, well, I wish I'd have this, and I wish I'd have that. I well, quit coveting what somebody else has got and start seeking God. Amen. He may not give you what they got. He may give you more. Yeah. Right. Trustworthiness is proven by one's pursuits, priorities, purity, and provisions. But it's also proven by the plan. He said, what's the plan? Brother Stacy preached on it all week. Here's the plan of God for every one of his children's lives. That they have conditioned their lives, first of all, to be submissive to the Lord's command. God says it, that settles it. I'm not to question it. And yet... We'll say amen to that. But the preacher calls a meeting for next week. Where are you going to be? Oh. Amen. Hmm. See, we believe the preacher is a man of God as long as he's not preaching at us. Or as long as he's faithful. Don't mean that I have to be faithful. Can I help you with something? The preacher doesn't have any more bones or any different flesh than you got. He's just learned to be a part of the plan. Submit to the Lord's commands. Can I say that? Well, let me say this. Trustworthy Christians have conditioned their lives to subject themselves to the Lord's calling. Do you know the Lord has called each and every one of his people? First of all, he calls us to be saved. Right. No man coming unto the Father except he be drawn. After we're saved, he calls all of us to serve. How's your service for the Lord? Then he puts some specific calls on people's lives. He, he calls some to be teachers and some to be pastors and some to be evangelists and missionaries. He calls specific things. And hallelujah, one day he's going to call us all home. Amen. But are you subject to the call? 
Can I say being part of the plan means that we have conditioned our lives to share or participate in the Lord's commission. That's what it's all about. Pointing somebody else to Jesus. Getting the gospel out. I don't know who keeps sending them tracts. I don't know how they always get the same one, but somebody's giving out tracts. Hallelujah. Right. We wasn't giving out tracts. They wouldn't be sending them back. And I'm working on those uh, things Brother Stacy uh, talked about this week. Uh, I, I've watched a part of one. I'm going to work on it. He's got some QR codes with, uh, uh, with some uh, videos that present the gospel. And he's got a whole book called Paid in Full that we gave out at one time, uh, which is just on QR code. Well, I'm going to give that project to Sid, uh, make those available. Everybody's got social media. Put that on there. Just say, hey, check this out. Might, never know. Somebody might watch it, get saved. Uh, it's all full of the gospel. Uh, somebody might read that book and get saved. Uh, why don't we use social media for something that's godly? That would be a blessing. Uh, 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 we'll put it on our stuff uh, here at the church. Uh, we'll put it on a, on a card stock and give it out. Say, hey, uh, 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 why don't you watch this? Uh, you never know. They can put their phone on it, be on their phone. They can watch it and get born again. Wouldn't that be a blessing? Amen. Just being part of the Great Commission. Listen. There is nobody less techno technology, however you say it, savvy than me. I can't even say it, let alone do it. You know what my I got a phone for? To make calls. I can't do all that junk, and I don't want to do all that junk. I get a headache thinking about it. My granddaughter, she gets my phone. She gets to swiping and doing all this stuff and everything, and she's got stuff. She knows more about my phone than me. She'll give it back to me and be a rainbow on it. I said, where in the world did that come from? She does. She gets rainbow. Ah. But hey, we're living in a technology age. People live on them things. Go to a restaurant. Everybody sitting there. It's a true story. True story. We was in revival one time. Brother Mike Goodson was here. And it was late. And we took him. And about the only place that was open was Applebee's. We went to Applebee's. And we had no idea it was karaoke night. What a blessing. <laughs> it's a bunch of drunks with no talent. Huh? I wanted to be Simon Cow. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> but anyway. They sat us underneath one of the speakers. We could not hear each other across the table. We actually became like everybody else in all the restaurants today. We was texting each other uh, across the table to be able to, you know, communicate when it was when we was trying to get a meal down, huh? What can I say? They're all on phones. So they may never read a track. But they're on their phone. If it's a tool to get the gospel to them, use the tools. Hallelujah. Let me say this, I'll be done. Somebody go get that defibrillator out there. I think somebody needs it today. Untrustworthy Christians make little impact, are lacking in the power of God to overcome life's trials, and can't be depended on by God or His church. I don't want to be an untrustworthy Christian. I want to be trustworthy. And in reality, if I live my life like some of you all lived your life, you wouldn't allow me to be your pastor. You expect more out of me than you do yourself. And that's not fair. We're all called to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But here's the good news. As your pastor, I love you. I'm concerned about you. That's why I have no problem preaching a message like this. Because the Lord wants you to be trustworthy. He wants to, you to be somebody he can count on. We are in a battle. This isn't playtime. This is the battlefield, friend. We need to be serious about the Lord's work. And I wonder today, are you tired of living the yo-yo life? 
Why don't you just become trustworthy? Somebody that others can look to and say, wow, I want to be a Christian like them. You say, well, they shouldn't be looking at me. Well, I got bad news for you. The Bible says we're written epistles known and read of all men. They're watching you. So why don't you emulate the Lord Jesus Christ before them? So they will desire to have what you have. And his name is Jesus. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. If you're here today and you're saved and the Lord spoke to your heart, the altar will be open once you come talk to the Lord. If you're here today and you're not saved, but the Lord pricked your heart, you'd like to be saved, you just don't know how to be saved. We'd love to introduce you to Jesus. You come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you what the Bible says about being saved. You can be saved today. If you're here today and you're just struggling with some things, why don't you come have a little talk with Jesus? He'll help you with it. But don't leave here today without the mindset, God help me to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Lord, help me to seek you. Seek you first. Seek your righteousness. And seek to be the child of God you'd have me to be. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come get a song of invitation. Some are already coming and praying. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for the word of God. God, we have all at times come short of verse 33 of Matthew chapter 6. Lord, we have all sought other things before we have sought you. Lord, there have been times when we have all had our priorities not lined up with your priorities. Lord, there have been times when, Lord, we have fretted and we have feared and we have not followed and put the Lord first and, O ye of little faith, applied to us. Lord, there may be some today that that is applying to. But, Lord, we're thankful for the good grace of God. We're thankful for the mercy of God. Lord, you don't give us what we deserve. You give us what we need. And you hold back those things that we often deserve. And, God, we thank you for that. So, Father, I now pray that, God, you'd speak to hearts. I pray that folks would act on that measure of faith that you've given to every man and help them to come and do business with the Lord. Help them to leave in victory. Help them to leave being a trustworthy Christian. And Father, I certainly pray, and Lord, I don't know anybody's heart, but Lord, in a crowd this size, if there be somebody who doesn't know Christ, I pray today... On this Father's Day, it'd be the day of salvation for them. Help them to come. Let's take a Bible and show them how to be saved. Father, bless now this invitation. We'll thank you for it. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.